Hello students, in present video, I am going to explain about second problem from consignment accounts topic. I am making this video for degree students. So in present video, I am going to concentrate about unsold stock in consignment accounts. So previous videos links are available in the description box. Let us see the question first. Arun of Mumbai consigned 200 cotton bales to Rahim of Hyderabad. The cost of each bale is 400 rupees. Arun paid freight 2000 rupees, packing 1200 rupees, insurance and other charges 1000 rupees. Two months bill was received for 50,000 rupees from Rahim as an advance against the consignment. Arun discounted the bill which cost 2000 rupees. An account sales was received from Rahim stating that 180 cotton bales are disposed of realizing 500 rupees per bale, 450 on cash, 50 rupees on credit. Expenses incurred by Rahim, cartage to go down 800 rupees, go down rent 500 rupees, insurance of go down 700. Rahim is entitled to 5% commission on gross sales and an additional 3% del credit commission on credit sales. A check was enclosed for the balance. Give journal entries and open ledger accounts in the books of both the parties. This is a question. Let us see the solution for this. I have written all important points of this problem on the board. See, Arun is a trader who is doing his business in Mumbai. So he wants to sell his goods even in Hyderabad also. One option is he has to open a branch in Hyderabad. But this is expensive. Other option is he can send the goods to an agent who is living in Hyderabad. So he wants to send the goods to Rahim. Rahim is agent. Arun is principal. So Rahim has to sell the goods in Hyderabad in favor of Arun. So from sale proceeds, he can deduct his commission. Remaining amount, he has to pay to Arun. So this agreement is known as consignment. Here, the person who is sending the goods on consignment is known as consignor. Arun is consignor. The person to whom these goods are sent on consignment basis is known as Kanzaini. Rahim is Kanzaini. Arun sent 200 cotton bales at the rate of 400 rupees each to Rahim. So 80,000 worth of goods are sent by Kanzaini to Kanzaini on consignment basis. What is the meaning of cotton bale? Bale means a large bundle or package prepared for shipping, storage or sale. It is tightly compressed and secured by wires. Unlike that. So, one bale is equal to 2.18 quintals. To send these goods, Arun incurred some expenses. Freight, 2000 rupees. Packing, 1200. Insurance and other expenses, 1000. Total, 4200. Consignor incurred to send these goods. And consignor needs some advance from consignee. So, he can demand that advance in three forms. In the form of a check, in the form of a demand draft, are in the form of a bills of exchange. Here, Arun is demanding this advance from Kanzaini in the form of a bill. So, this bill becomes bills receivable for Kanzaini because he is going to receive money on that bill and the bills payable to Kanzaini because he has to pay the amount in future. So, advance amount is 50,000 rupees. This bill is prepared for two months. Means exactly speaking, after two months, from Rahim, he has to take this 50,000 rupees at once. But consignor needs this at once amount immediately. So what he did, he went to bank and he sold this bill to bank. So bank deducted 2,000 rupees and the remaining amount, 48,000 rupees, bank has given to Arun. So this is known as discounting of bills of exchange. And Rahim sold 180 bills. So total goods are sent 200 bales, but a consignee is able to sell only 180. Means 20 bales are unsold. So to know the correct profit or loss in consignment business, this unsold stock value we should calculate. So after that, we have to prepare journal and ledger of consignor and consignee. So let us know some important points about unsold stock in consignment. Arun is doing business in Mumbai now. Assume that as an accounting year, Arun is following financial year. You know financial year starts from 1st April, ends with 31st March. 
assume present year is 2021-22. So year starting date is 1st April 2021. Year ending date is 31st March 2022. With Arun, 600 cotton bales are there. Assume. Out of this 600, 400 is going to sell in Mumbai. Remaining 200, he sent to Kanzaimi on consignment basis. Assume that till 31st March 22, out of this 400, he was able to sell 350 bales. So unsold stock is 50 bales. And here in this 200, Kanzaimi sold 180 bales. No? Means in consignment business, unsold stock is 20 bales. So two closing stocks we have. 50, 20. So there is a closing stock information where he has to show in his accounts. He prepares final accounts now on 31st March 2020. In final accounts, trading account credit side, in balance sheet under asset side, he has to show closing stock. In Mumbai business, 50 bales are unsold. In Hyderabad business, consignment business, 20 are unsold. So there is a 50, 20 bits value we should calculate and we should record here. Not only that, Arun prepares consignment related accounts also. He prepares consignment account to know the profit or loss in consignment business. So in consignment account also, credit side, consignment business related unsold stock value he has to show. So we need unsold stock value, closing stock value because in consignment account credit side we have to show to know the profit or loss in consignment business and in our final accounts in consignors final accounts trading account credit side balance sheet asset side he has to show closing stock so for this purpose consignor has to calculate closing stock value while writing closing stock value we follow one convention that is prudence also known as conservatism so what this convention says ignore anticipated profits but provide for anticipated losses so as per this convention cost price or market price which is less that value we have to show as closing stock here so cost price means consignment business related information is available now so we will concentrate on this 20 bills so 20 bills at the rate of 400 rupees each consignor set means cost price of one bale is 400 rupees now so unsold stock value means 20 bales into 400 is equal to 8000 rupees not only that to send these goods consignor incur some expenditure on total goods on 200 bales consignor incurred 4200 rupees expenditure Similarly, Kanzaini incurred 2000 rupees on total goods, 200 bills. So, proportionate expenses of Kanzainar and Kanzaini also we have to consider. Means, on 20 bills, the expenses incurred by Kanzainar and Kanzaini also we should consider to calculate the cost price of these 20 bills. So, how cost price comes? 20 bills cost plus proportionate expenses of consignor and the consignee. And what do you mean by market price? Market price means if these goods, if these 20 bales are sold in the market, the amount which is going to realize is known as market price or net realizable value. There is another value also known as replacement value means the value which is required to replace unsold stock. If you prepare accounts under inflation accounting method, then cost price is to be compared with the replacement value. But consignment accounts we prepare under historical accounting method. That is why cost price should be compared with market price. Sometimes market price may not be available in the question. In that case, our assumption is cost price is less than market price. So cost price of this unsold stock is to be calculated. That value only we have to show on credit side of consignment account and in our final accounts also. So in our present problem, there is no information about market price of these 20 bills. No? 
So our assumption is cost price is less than market price. Therefore, cost price of these 20 bills we have to calculate. That value becomes unsold stock value. To send the goods on consignment, consignor spends some expenditure no? 4200. To receive the consignment and to sell the consignment, consignee spent some expenditure no? 2000. So the expenses related to consignment business are divided into two types. Non-recurring expenses, also known as direct expenses. Recurring expenses, also known as indirect expenses. Recurring means repeating. So these expenses are rare expenses. And these expenses are spent again and again. So non-recurring expenses increase the value of goods. Because these expenses are incurred on a particular consignment. Therefore, while calculating unsold stock value, we should add non-recurring expenses to cost of unsold goods. Non-recurring expenses are partly paid by consignor and partly paid by consignee. To send the goods to consignment, consignor spends non-recurring expenses. And consignee spends non-recurring expenses to receive the goods. Similarly, recurring expenses. Consignor spends some recurring expenses while receiving the advance from consignee or at the time of receiving that final payment from consignee. Consignee spends recurring expenses after receiving the goods to his quota. So to store these goods, to sell these goods, consignee spends recurring expenses. These expenses do not increase the value of goods. Therefore, while calculating unsold stock value, we should not add recurring expenses spent by consignor and consignee to unsold goods cost. Let us see the list of recurring expenses, non-recurring expenses spent by consignor and consignee. Non-recurring expenses incurred by consignor. First one, transport, also known as freight or forwarding charges, carriage, cartage. These are the expenses incurred by consignor when goods are transported from his premises to consignee's godown or to consignee's shop. Next, insurance in transit. For example, marine insurance, packing. Next, dock dues, also known as dock charges. These expenses are paid by consignor to port authorities for using the port when goods are sent through seaway. Next, loading charges. Next, custom duty. Sometimes he gives us export duty or import duty. Custom duty is a tax imposed on imports or exports of goods. Next, landing charges. These expenses are paid to airport authorities or to seaport authorities for landing the goods in airport or seaport. Let us see the non-recurring expenses incurred by consignee. Unloading charges, freight also known as carriage or cartage. Dog dues, also known as dock charges, custom duty or import duty, octroi. Octroi means when goods are received from another city, the municipal corporation may charge one some tax that is known as octroi duty, local taxes, insurance, for example, insurance in transit. Next, establishment expenses means the expenses incurred to start the business. Next, clearing charges. When goods come to railway station or seaport, so to take the delivery of these goods, consignee pay some expenses to port authorities or to railway authorities, known as clearing charges. Let us see recurring expenses incurred by consignor. First one, bank commission on collection of checks. Suppose consignee paid the advance through check or final due amount consignee is paying through check. Then to collect the amount, consignor may incur some bank commissions. Next one, discounting charges on bills received from the consignee. So if advance is coming in the form of a bill or if a due amount is coming in the form of a bill, then if consignor wants to collect the amount before the due date of the bill, he discounts the bill with the bank now so that discounting charges come under recurring expenses. Next one. Expenses incurred to receive back the damaged goods sent by consignee. Next, advertisement. Then, bad debts. When, when Dell Credit Commission is not allowed to consignee, then this bad debt expenditure, this bad debt loss becomes a recurring expenses of consignor. 
So if del creditor commission is allowed by consignor to consignee, then bad debt is not a loss, not an expenditure to consignor. Let us see the list of recurring expenses incurred by consignee. Go down rent. Sometimes he may give this as only rent. Go down insurance. Sometimes he gives as insurance. Salary to staff, advertisement, selling and distribution expenses, commission deducted, carriage on sales, expenses on goods returned, expenses incurred on goods damaged, brokerage, auction room expenses, insurance, for example, fire insurance, salesman expenses, office expenses, administration expenses, etc. And remember one important point. Suppose in question related to this consignment expenses, there is no proper information. In that case, the expenses of consignor are to be treated as non-recurring expenses. The expenses of consignee should be treated as recurring expenses. Let us calculate unsold stock value in this problem. Cost of unsold goods. Total goods sent 200 bales. Consignee sold 180 bales. So unsold stock quantity is 20 bales. 20 bales into 1 bale cost is 400 rupees. 400, 8000. To this, proportionate direct expenses of consignor and consignee we should add. Why only direct expenses we should add? Because direct expenditure increase the cost of goods. So direct expenses are spent on a particular consignment. That is why direct expenses we should add. Indirect expenses we should not add. Consignor expenses are always direct expenses. So because all these three expenses are spent by consignor to send these goods. How many times consignor send these goods? Only for one time. Therefore, these expenses are rare expenses. Means direct expenses. So total 4200 we should consider for calculating unsold stock value. And don't add 4200 to this 8000. Because 4200 is spent on 200 bills. We are calculating 20 bills value. Therefore, 20 bills related expenses only we should consider. That is why I wrote this word, proportionate word. So, proportionate direct expenses of consignor Arun. On 200 bills, Arun spent 4200. On 20 bills, how much? 4200 divided by 200 into 20. 420 rupees. Come to consign. Consign is spent 800, 500, 700. 800 he spent for carriage. Means, suppose goods came to railway station. From railway station to his go down or to his shop. To bring the goods, he spent 800 rupees. How many times he brings these goods? Only for one time. Therefore, cartage expenditure is direct expenditure. Rent, go down rent. Every month he pays. Means this is a repeated expenditure, indirect expenditure. Go down insurance. Every year he pays. Means this is also repeated expenditure. So, this 500 and 700 are indirect expenses. 800 is direct expenditure. Only direct expenditure we should consider now. On 200 bales, consignee spent 800 rupees direct expenditure. On 20 bales, how much? 800 divided by 200 into 20. 80 rupees. Add this 3. So, unsold stock value is 8500. So, after completing these working notes, we have to show the journal ledger of consignor and consignee. First in consignor's books you prepare. So, journal of Arun, ledger of Arun. I show ledger on board. Based on that, journal entries also be free. Ledger of Arun, consignor. In consignor books, he prepares three accounts. Consignment account, consignee's account and goods sent on consignment account. Consignment account is prepared to know the profit or loss in consignment business. Consignee's account is prepared to know the final due amount which is to be received from consignee. Goods sent on consignment account is prepared to know the details of goods sent on consignment. Hyderabad consignment account. Consignee's area's name be added. Why? 
in present problem there is only one consignee assume i am consignor i am sending goods to 10 different consignees who are located in 10 different places so if i write only consignment word then which place related consignment this is there is no clarity therefore consignee's areas will we should add to consignment account so consignment account is prepared to know the profit or loss in consignment business no means what is to be recorded in this account expenses losses incomes and gains of consignment business so in which account we show expenses losses gains and incomes in nominal account therefore consignment account is a nominal account so while preparing this account nominal account rule we should follow what is nominal account rule debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains so consignment business related expenses losses we have to show on debit side of this account consignment business related incomes and gains we have to show on credit side of this account then rahim account with the person name we are preparing this account so this is a personal account goods and non consignment account we are going to show goods details no goods asset so assets come under real account so this account is a real account so first of all happen let us see arun sent 200 bills at the rate of 400 rupees to rahim on consignment so we are writing journal entries and we are preparing ledger accounts in arun's books no therefore your assumption is you are an accountant of arun so analyze all these transactions from arun's point of view to arun what is coming from arun what is going that we should observe so we are sending goods to consignee on consignment basis so goods value 200 into 400 80000 so 80000 worth of goods we are sending so 80 goods represent cost of goods cost means expenditure expenditure is to be debited so debit side we have to show this and what to write in particular column we are sending goods on consignment basis no write on that to goods sent on consignment account amount 200 bills at the rate of 400 rupees each 80000 now posting we did based on this posting let us frame the journal entry for sending the goods on consignment in hyderabad consignment account debit side i want to post therefore while writing the journal entry hyderabad consignment account should be debited with the 80000 rupees and in particular column what we wrote to goods sent on consignment account that account should be credited goods sent on consignment account 80000 so this is the journal entry in consignors books for sending the goods on consignment hyderabad consignment account is debited therefore in hyderabad consignment account debit side it is posted similarly goods sent on consignment account is credited therefore in goods sent on consignment account credit side we should post what to write in particular column debit account name hyderabad consignment account amount Eighty thousand rupees. Journal of Arun, consignor. Particulars: ledger, folio number, debit, credit. Entry is Hyderabad consignment account data to goods sent on consignment account eighty thousand eighty thousand. Narration: Being two hundred bills at the rate of four hundred rupees each sent on consignment. Next what happened? Consignor spent four thousand two hundred rupees expenditure. For this, we have to write the journal entry and we should post that entry in the accounts. So for consignment business, that four thousand two hundred is expenditure. Expenditure on debit side we should show. Debit side four thousand two hundred we should write. That in particular column what to write? I am consignor. I paid this four thousand two hundred. If I pay in cash form, then you have to write to cash. If I pay this amount through my bank account, suppose through net banking. Through debit card, through credit card, through check, through DD. If I pay, then to bank we should write. So my assumption is they paid this amount through bank. Therefore, I am writing to bank account. 
So based on this posting, let us find the journal entry for consignor expenses in consignor's books. Hyderabad consignment account we should debit because on debit side we posted Hyderabad consignment account data 4202. In particular column we wrote bank now. Therefore, you have to credit bank account. So why Hyderabad consignment account is debited? Because in Hyderabad consignment account, David said I want to show this amount. Why bank account is credited? Bank means personal account. So bank we wrote here, but actually speaking, one bank name we write here, no? SBI account, HDFC account. So with the firm's name, if you open any account, that is a personal account. Personally control debit the receiver, credit the giver. So from our bank account, we are paying money. Means a bank is a giver. Therefore, we are crediting bank account. So as Hyderabad consignment account is debited, in Hyderabad consignment account, debit side we posted. And we are not preparing bank account now. Therefore, second time posting is not required. Hyderabad consignment account debt to bank account 4200, 4200. Narration. Being the entry for consignor's expenses, that is freight 2000 rupees, packing 1200, insurance and other charges 1000 rupees. Next one is for advance 50,000 advance we received from Rahim. Sometimes consignor demands advance from consignee because our money will be with the consignee. So our sale proceeds consignee has to pay to us now. When? Not now. After some time, he is going to pay that amount. So during this time, when consignor has some financial requirements, he may demand some advance from consignee. Consignee may pay this advance in the form of cash, check or DD or bills of exchange. In present problem, for 50,000, consignor prepared one bill and he received acceptance from consignee. Means advance is coming in the form of bills of exchange. So when we demand money from Rahim, advance amount 50,000, then Rahim should pay that 50,000 rupees to us. Means for 50,000, Rahim becomes a debtor. So debtor means asset, asset shows debit balance. Therefore, Rahim account debtor, 50,000 rupees. Then Rahim is a debtor now. If you observe balance sheet of consignor, so data under assets we have to write data value is 50,000 rupees. On this data, consignor prepared a bills of exchange and he received acceptance. So what happened? Same data asset is converted into another asset that is bills receivable. So for consignor, this bills of exchange is bills receivable. Because on that bill, in future, he is going to receive money. For a consignee, this bills of exchange is bills payable because he has to pay the money. So debtor asset is converted into another asset that is bills receivable. Now, debtor asset we should cancel. No? How we created that asset? By debiting Rahim. How to cancel? By crediting Rahim. So Rahim account should be credited with 50,000 rupees. And a new asset is generated here, bills receivable. So bills receivable is an asset, asset shows a debit balance. Therefore, bills receivable should be debited. So this is the journal entry in consignor's books for receiving advance in the form of bills of exchange. Here, bills receivable account we are not preparing, ignore. We are preparing Rahim account now. In entry, Rahim account is created. Therefore, in Rahim account, credit side we have to post. By what to write in particular column? Debit account name, bills receivable account. Advance amount, 50,000 rupees. So remember, advance entry, we should not post in consignment account. Because in entry, consignment account is not there. It appears only in consignee's account, that to do on credit side. Bills receivable account data to Rahim account. 50,000, 50,000. Narration, being at once received. Next, what happened? Consignor discounted this bill with the bank. So, discounting means this bill is prepared for two months. So, after two months only, consignee is going to pay that at once amount 50,000 rupees to us. But we need this money at present. So, option is 
we can go to bank we can sell the bill to bank so selling the bill to bank before the due date of the bill is known as discounting of the bill then bank pays money how much amount they pay bill is discounted at 2000 rupees means bank paid 50000 minus 2000 48000 rupees only how they pay they deposit in our account means our bank balance increases so bank account is a personal account debit the receiver credit the giver money is coming into our bank account means bank is a receiver means we should debit bank account data bank deposited 48000 rupees in our account and now this bill is not with the consignor because he sold this bill to bank now it is meaningless to write that we have 50000 worth of asset so there is no asset with us means we should cancel this 50000 worth of bills of exchange so how we created this asset by debiting if you want to cancel you have to credit therefore credit bills receivable account we created this asset account with the 50000 if you want to cancel with the 50000 you have to cancel so credit 50000 then what about 2000 difference it should come on debit side no what to write for that to arun this 2000 is loss why bank accepted for this proposal discounting proposal because bank is going to take 50000 worth of bill from consignor on the due date bank collects 50000 from rahim but bank is paying only 48000 rupees to consignor means that a 2000 is banker's profit to bank this is profit but for arun this is loss instead of getting 50000 we are getting only 48000 rupees we are losing 2000 so that a 2000 loss comes under nominal account nominal account will debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains this 2000 is a loss we should debit what to write for that discount discount account data 2000 rupees so this is a entry for discounting the bill and if you observe there is no consignment account there is no consignee account rahim account there is no good sent on consignment account so this entry we need not to post in this three accounts simply ignore when you are writing journal entries if you write the journal entry that is enough no need to post this entry in the accounts bank account data 48000 discount account data 2000 to bills receivable account 50000 narration being bill is discounted next is for sales Kanzai sold 180 bits for 500 rupees each. In this 500, 450 is a cash sale, 50 rupees credit sale. Sales income. So incomes in Kanzai mein take on credit side we should write. So credit side we have to write this. What to write in particular column? Don't write sales word. Who sold Kanzai ni Rahim? In future Rahim has to pay this amount to us. So Rahim is liable to us. Means Rahim is a debtor. Debtor means asset. Assets debit side we should show. Therefore Rahim account debtor two. In consignment account credit side I want to show. Therefore we have to credit Hyderabad consignment account. So in Hyderabad consignment account credit side we have to post now. What to write in particular column? Debit account name by Rahim account. Now sales amount we should write in inner column calculate cash sale is one eighty bills at the rate of four fifty rupees eighty one thousand credit sale is one eighty bills at the rate of fifty rupees nine thousand total in outer column sales amount is ninety thousand rupees. As Hyderabad consignment account is created in Hyderabad consignment account credit side we posted and Rahim account is debited. Therefore, in Rahim account debit side we have to post. What to write in particular column? Credit account name Hyderabad consignment account amount ninety thousand rupees. Rahim account data to Hyderabad consignment account ninety thousand ninety thousand. Being the entry for sales made by consignee. Next what happened? 
Kanzaini spent expenditure 2000 rupees. For this expenditure, we have to write the journal entry and we should post that entry in the accounts. So for consignment business, this is an expenditure. Expenditure debit side we have to show 2000 rupees. Who paid this amount? Rahim. He is only an agent of us. In favor of Arun, he sold the goods. In favor of Arun, he spent his expenditure. In future, we have to return that amount to him. So to us, to consignor, consignee is becoming a creditor for this expenditure, 2000. So creditor is a liability. Liability shows a credit balance. Therefore, we have to credit consignee's name. Amount, 2000. And in consignment account, debit said I want to post. Therefore, we should debit Hyderabad consignment account. So this is the journal entry for consignee's expenses in consignor's books. So Hyderabad consignment account is debited. Therefore, in that account, debit side we should post. What to write in particular column? Credit account name. To Rahim account. Rahim account also we are preparing. In entry, Rahim account is created. Therefore, in Rahim account, credit side we should post. What to write in particular column? Debit account name. Hyderabad consignment account. 2000 rupees. Keep one important point in mind. While calculating unsold stock, direct expenses only we consider. So indirect expenses we ignore. But while preparing consignment account, total expenses of consignee we should consider. Hyderabad consignment account data to Rahim account 2000-2000. Narration, being the expenses paid by consignee, that is cartage to Godam 800, Godam rent to 500, insurance of Godam 700. Next is for commission. So consignor's goods consignee is selling. For this, consignor gives some remuneration to consignee, known as commission. Commission of consignee is of three types. Normal commission or ordinary commission, delegated commission, overriding commission. So if there is no proper information, then our assumption is it is a normal commission. When delegated commission will be given, suppose consignee is selling some goods on credit and he failed to receive some amount from customers. Then it becomes a bad debt. Who should bear this bad debt loss? Consignor. Suppose consignor wants a consignee to take the responsibility of bad debts. In that case, consignor allows an additional discount to consignee. So known as a Dell Credit Commission. So if Dell Credit Commission is allowed to consignee, consignee is responsible for bad debt loss. Other commission is, third one is overriding commission. When it will be given, suppose product is newly launched in the market. So consignee has to put some extra efforts to market this product because people are not aware of this. For that extra efforts, consignor gives some extra commission known as overriding commission. Otherwise, here goods cost price is 400 now. Assume that generally people are selling these goods at 500 rupees. Suppose consignee sold these goods for more than 500, then consignor has to encourage. In that case also for that extra sale, consignor may give extra commission known as overriding commission. In present problem, two commissions are given. Ordinary commission 5%, Dell credit commission 3%. So in the absence of proper information, these two commissions we have to calculate on total sales. Total sales amount is 90,000 now. On 90,000, 5% you have to calculate. On 90,000, 3% also we have to calculate. But in question, clearly he mentioned one point. That is, on gross sales, means on total sales, we have to allow 5% ordinary commission. And only on credit sales amount, 3% del credit commission we should allow. So as he has given instructions clearly, we have to follow that. And the consignor has to pay this commission to consignee. Means to consignment business, consignee's commission is an expenditure. Expenditure, debit side we have to show now. Remember this point. And what to write in particular column? Consignor has to pay. Means to consignor, consignee is becoming a creditor for this commission amount. Creditor means liability. Liability shows a credit balance. Therefore, Kanzaini second we have to credit. 
and in consignment account debit side i want to post if i want to post on debit side while writing the general entry consignment account should be debited therefore entry is can hyderabad consignment account data to rahim account posting to rahim account so remember this point for consignee's expenses for consignee's commission in consignor's book same entry comes now we should calculate the amount on total sales 5% no total sales amount 90000 on that 5% 4500 on credit sales credit sale amount we calculated here 9000 rupees on credit sales 3% debt creditor commission 270 total commission in outer column 4770 in entry also write on the same so same entry appears in rahim account also rahim account is created therefore credit side will have to post debit account name by hyderabad consignment account 4770 next come to unsold stock we calculated in working notes now so unsold stock value in consignment account credit side we have to show and what to write in particular column by consignment stock account 8500 based on this posting let us frame the general entry for unsold stock in consignment account credit side i want to post means consignment account should be credited to hyderabad consignment account 8500 in particular column we wrote consignment stock debit that account name consignment stock account so this is a general entry for unsold stock in consignors books consignment stock account data to hyderabad consignment account 8500 8500 narration being the unsold stock valued now the doubt is why unsold stock credit side of consignment account we are showing so opening stock nothing but goods sent on debit side we wrote sales on credit side we wrote so closing stock on credit side so one should recollect final accounts trading account in trading account also we used to do the same opening stock debit side purchases debit side sales credit side closing stock credit side here also same concept so we send 80000 worth of goods he sold some goods remaining goods also if you write then only cash to profit comes no if a remaining goods are not shown on credit side then it gives the meaning that total goods are sold for 90000 rupees so physically when you see with the consignee there is some unsold stock but as per consignment account total goods are sold it is not correct therefore closing stock credit side we have to show then finally find out the profit or loss in consignment business so credit side total is more than debit side total in rough notes credit total first we should calculate minus debit total 90970 difference 7530 credit side we wrote incomes debit side expenses income is more than expenditure therefore that amount is profit so in consignment business arun got 7530 profit this profit where the total is less that side we should show so debit side total is less show on debit side and what to write for this arun is doing business in mumbai so for his business he prepares final accounts trading account profit and loss account balance sheet in profit and loss account along with the mumbai business related profit and losses consignment business related profits or losses also he has to show means consignment business related profit in profit and loss account we have to show therefore here you have to write to profit and loss account put the totals highest amount debit side also same so based on this posting let us frame the general entry for profit in consignment account debit side i want to post therefore while writing the general entry 
Hyderabad consignment account should be debited with 7530 rupees to profit and loss account. Hyderabad consignment account data to profit and loss account 7530 7530. Narration being profit on consignment transfer to profit and loss account. Next you come to Rahim account. Debit total is more than credit total. In rough notes, debit total minus credit total. Difference 33,230. We said we should show credit total is less. Credit side you have to show this amount. What to write for this? This answer is due amount. See, Kanzaini sold our goods for 90,000. Already he paid 50,000 rupees to us in the form of advance. He deducts that amount. He deducts his expenses, his commission. Remaining amount only he pays to us. So this is the due amount from Kanzaini. And how he paid through bank, he gave a check. Therefore, for this amount you have to write bank account. Put the totals, highest total. Credit said also 90,000. So let us frame the entry for this due amount. In Kanzaini second, credit said I want to post. Means Kanzaini second should be credited. Amount 33,230. In particulars column we wrote bank. Therefore, bank account should be debited. So this is the entry for due amount. Bank account data to Rahim account 33,230, 33,230. Narration being the amount due from consignee received. Now come to goods and bond consignment account. We have to close this account. So by transferring the balance to trading account, we have to close this. Because we prepare final accounts for Mumbai business. So in trading account, credit side closing stock we show. So not only Mumbai business related closing stock, Consignment business related closing stock value also in trading account credit side we have to show. Therefore, write down to trading account. Suppose he is preparing manufacturing account also. Then by transferring to manufacturing account, we have to close this account. In that case, you have to write to manufacturing account. Amount same 80,000 rupees. Put the totals. So let us frame the journal entry for this. In goods sent on consignment account, debit side I want to post. Therefore, while writing the journal entry, goods sent on consignment account should be debited with 80,000 rupees to trading account. Goods sent on consignment account data to trading account 80,000, 80,000. Narration being goods sent on consignment account is transferred to trading account. With this, journal and ledger of consign are completed. Now come to Kanzaini's books. Journal of Kanzaini, Rahim, Ledger of Rahim. I will show ledger on the board based on that general entries we frame. Ledger of Rahim, Kanzaini. So as we are writing journal entries and we are preparing ledger accounts in Kanzaini's books, now your assumption is you are an accountant of Rahim. So think all transactions from Rahim's point of view. Rahim prepares only one account, that is Kanzaini's account own account. Why? Because finally he has to pay the due amount to Aruna. So how much due amount he should pay? To know that he prepares consignment account. So why he is not preparing consignment account? Because consignment business profit or loss is related to consign or no. So consignment is not concerned with consignment profit. Therefore he need not to prepare consignment account. And why he is not preparing goods sent on consignment account? Because these are not his goods. He is only an agent for these goods. So he records this goods information in stock register. A separate account is not required. First what happened? Consignee received consignment. Goods are coming on consignment. As I said, he records that information in stock register. No? Therefore no entry is required for that. Next what happened? Consignor spend expenditure. So for consignor expenses in consignor's bus, we need not write any entry. Next, what happened? Consignor prepared a bill of exchange for advance amount, 50,000. He presented that bill to us and we have given acceptance. 
For this, we have to write the journal entry. So, Kanzai ni is giving acceptance to Kanzai not on a bills of exchange. So, Kanzai ni has to pay 50,000 rupees to Kanzai not. Means to Kanzai ni, Kanzai not is becoming a creditor. No? Creditor means liability. Liability shows a credit balance. Therefore, to Arun account, 50,000. Now, what happened? For this 50,000 amount, we are giving acceptance on a bill. So, Arun is a creditor. Now, same liability is converted into another liability, bills payable. So, creditor liability we should cancel. A new liability, bills payable, we should create. How to cancel creditor liability? By crediting, we created. If you want to cancel, you have to debit. So, Arun account data. Same amount, 50,000. Two, a new liability is created known as bills payable. So this is also liability, you know? Liability shows a credit balance. That is why I'm creating. Bill value, 50,000 rupees. So this is a journal entry in Kanzani's books for giving acceptance on a bill. Now, Arun account we are preparing. Arun account is debited. So debit side we should post. Two bills payables account. 50,000 rupees. Journal of Rahim Kanzaini. First entry Arun account data to bills payable account 50,000, 50,000. Narration being at once paid. Next, Kanzainar discounted that bill with the banker. So, this transaction is between Kanzainar and bank. Kanzaini is not concerned with that discount transaction. So, Kanzaini need not write any entry for this. Next, Kanzaini sold this goods for 90,000 rupees. For sales, he has to write the entry. So, this is not his income. In future, he has to pay this 90,000 rupees to Kanzainar. To Kanzaini, for this 90,000, Kanzainar is becoming a creditor. Creditor means liability. Liability should be credited. To Arun account. Sales amount is 90,000 rupees. And in this 90,000, 81,000 is cash sale. So, cash is coming from customers. Cash is an asset. Assets come under real account. Real account rule, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. So, cash is coming. Therefore, cash account should be debited. 81,000. Remaining 9,000 is credit sale. For that, what to write? So, customer becomes a debtor for this 90,000 rupees. In future, from customer, Kanzani has to receive this amount. So, debtor means asset. Asset shows a debit balance. Therefore, we have to debit customer's accounts. Names are not available. So, you can write a customer's or you can write debtor's word. I am writing debtor's account. So, this is the entry for sales in Kanzani's books. Arun account we are preparing. Arun account is created. So, credit should we have to post. By cash account, 81,000 rupees. By debtor's account. Our customer's account, 9,000 rupees. Cash account data, 81,000 rupees. Debtor account data, 9,000 rupees. To Arun account, 90,000 rupees. Narration, being goods are sold. Next is for Kanzani's expenditure, 2,000 rupees. At present, Kanzani is paying. But in future, Kanzani has to pay this 2,000 to him now. So to Rahim, Arun is becoming a debtor for this 2,000 rupees. Debtor means asset. Asset shows a debit balance. Therefore, we should debit Arun account. 2,000 rupees. Suppose Kanzani paid this 2,000 in the form of cash. Then we have to credit cash account. Suppose he paid that amount in the form of a check. DD. Through ATM card. Through credit card. Through wallet. In that case, you have to write bank. My assumption is he is paying that amount through bank. Credit bank account. Because bank account is a personal account. No? Personal account rule. Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Bank is a giver because through bank only is paying this 2000. Therefore, we created bank account. So, Arun account is debited. Therefore, debit should be post to bank account. 2000 rupees. Arun account data to bank account. 2000, 2000. Narration being various expenses paid on consignment. Next is for Kanzani's commission. 
4770 rupees so to consign this commission is an income income comes under nominal account nominal account rule debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains therefore income we should create to commission account 4770 rupees this amount should come from arun so for this commission amount arun is a debtor debtor means asset asset shows a debit balance therefore we should debit arun account so this is the entry for consignee's commission in consignee's books arun account is debited therefore debit side we should post to commission account 4770 Arun account debit to commission account four thousand seven seventy four thousand seven seventy narration being commission to be received on sale proceeds at the rate of five percent on ninety thousand rupees and at the rate of three percent on nine thousand rupees posting is completed next balancing credit total is more ninety thousand minus debit total. Debit total fifty six thousand seven seventy. Difference thirty three thousand two thirty. Debit total is less no. Debit side write down this amount thirty three thousand two thirty. This is a due amount. For this you have to write to bank account. Two sides put the totals. Highest value ninety thousand rupees. Based on this answer, let us find the general entry for this. Arun account data. Because in Arun account debit side we posted the sum sum no amount thirty three thousand two thirty two we wrote bank word write on that so this is the entry for due amount in the books of consignee Arun account debit to bank account thirty three thousand two thirty thirty three thousand two thirty being the due amount is remitted to consignor in consignee's books you can observe two points first one. If you recollect journal entries, in every entry, consignor's name is coming, Arun account, either on debit or credit. Remember this point. Second point is, once you compare consignee's account, which is prepared in consignor's books, with consignor's account, which is prepared in consignee's books, debit amount ninety thousand is appearing on credit side. Credit amounts. Are appearing on debit side. Remember this point. But don't write same particulars here. Accounts names differ because this account we prepared from consignor's point of view. This account we are preparing from consignee's point of view. So general entries are not same, but amounts are same. Answer is also same. As per consignor, due amount is thirty three thousand two thirty. So from consignee's point of view, also same due amount should come now. Therefore, answer is also same. So this is all about unsold stock related problem from consignment accounts. Hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you.